Okay, this is grade three, module two, lesson three, and we're going to be continuing telling time, uh, and we're going to be using a number line to assist us. Uh, number line with time is going to be particularly valuable uh, to solve elapsed uh, time and interval times, and, and so that's why we want to teach students how to use the number line, uh, because this is going to be a prerequisite for future lessons where uh, kids are going to be asked to solve some pretty challenging uh, time questions. So on this, uh, we're supposed to plot the various times on the clock, I mean on the number line here. Uh, so let's start with this first. Oh, let's do the digital ones first, because the digital ones, they're pretty straightforward and pretty easy. So we can see this 444, all right? So where that is, is you can see that Here's 4 o'clock, and then here's 440, and then 444 means you have to go, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, and we're going to go an additional 41, 42, 43, 44. So that is 444, because each of these intervals from here to here is 5 minutes, so 30 35, 40, and then we switch over. Instead of counting by intervals of 5, now we're going to count over intervals of 1. 41, 42, 43, 44, and that's how we get that. So using that same idea for 401, uh, so 401 means we're going to go way over here, and I have to zoom in at that point because there's 4 o'clock right here on this line, so 401 means we're going to go one space over, um, and that's 401. And zooming out, uh, zooming out, okay, and now let's do some of those analog clocks. All right, so that first analog clock right here says, okay, we know that the time is between 4 and 5 because the hour hand is between 4 and 5. So we know it's going to be 4 o'clock, and then we have to figure out how many additional minutes it's going to be. So let's count. So we start at the 12, and we count over 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30... We can't go another 5. 35 would be too much. So we're going to zoom in a little bit, and we're going to count by 1. So right now we're at 30, and then we've got 31, 32, 33, 34. So we have 4 o'clock plus 34 extra minutes. So our time is 434. So now we have to draw that line on our you know, label that on our number line. So 434, and I'll use the black ink this time, 434 is going to be in this direction, but then we're going to zoom in a little bit, and then here's 430, here's 4, oops, so here's 430, this guy right here would be 435, so 434 means we would need to go right here because this is 430 and then 31, 32, 33, 34. So that's where 434 would be. Let's zoom out again. And then, oh, let's just do one more clock. We don't need to do all the clocks. Let's do uh, this analog clock right here and we'll zoom in and we can see that it's somewhere between 4 and 5, so we know because the hour hand is between the 4 and the 5, so now we know that the time is 4 o'clock plus some minutes. So let's figure out how many minutes. So we start at the 12, and we count over 5, 10, 15, and it looks like we can only go one more minute over. So that's 5, 10, 15. 15, 16. So we have 4 o'clock plus 16 extra minutes. So now we have to label that on our number line. And we look, and we know that, well, 
I'm going to zoom in right around here because here's 10, so that's 4 o'clock plus 10 minutes. And we know that this line would be 4 o'clock plus 15 minutes. So we know that 4 o'clock and 16 minutes, I'm going to zoom in, would be one extra minute over. So it's going to be right there is our time. And that's 4.16. And moving to our last slide, we're not going to do all of these problems, uh, but the, the idea would be uh, is in, of this video, this slide, is to connect the concept of analog clocks with a number line, which we've already been doing. But the idea would be we're beginning the process of problem solving with elapsed time. So the first question says, what time does he start playing with his action figures? So we can see the clock over here. It's between two and three, so we know it's going to be two o'clock plus some minutes. So we're going to count, and we can start at the 12, and by now, students are, are going to know that the six is our 30. So that's 30 plus two extra minutes, so it's 32 extra minutes. So our time is two o'clock, whoa! You see that? Oh my goodness. Let's get back down there. Ah, there we go. So our time is going to be 2 o'clock plus 32 extra minutes. All right. So now the question is, question B says, he plays with his action figures for 23 minutes. What time does he stop? You know, what time does he finish playing? So the idea would be we have to start at 2.32 and then travel 23 more minutes. So there's a couple of ways to do it. I'm going to do something that's not quite explicitly mentioned in this lesson, uh, but I'm going to do it because I can. And the idea is to celebrate the fact that there's a variety of different ways to do it. So we know way back here is 2 o'clock. We know way up here is 3 o'clock. And I'm going to just arbitrarily choose where 2.32 is, our starting time. And I'm going to say it's a little bit over, right around half, right? So there's our 2.32. Now, it says that he, he plays with his action figures for 23 minutes. So I know if I, if I travel another 10 minutes, that puts us at 2.42. If I travel or play with my action figures for another 10 minutes, that puts us at 2.52. And now we have three remaining minutes to, um, to notate on our number line. So I'm going to just go three remaining minutes. So that's we're starting at 52, so that puts us at 53, 54, 55. So that puts us right here at 2.55. So there's our 20 minutes up here plus our extra three minutes, plus one, plus one, plus one, putting us at 2.55. Now is that the only way to do it? Nah, we could have done something that looked a lot like a traditional addition problem, but I'm pretty happy with sh showing it on a number line just to let students see that there's a variety of different ways to solve a problem. And now we're supposed to ask on question C, we're supposed to uh, model that on our uh, analog clock. So we know that the minutes is 255. So we know that it's going to point at the 11 for our minute hand. Now our hour hand is really, it's going to be somewhere between the 2 and the 3. But we know it's going to be a lot closer to the 3 than it is to the 2 because 255 means we're practically at 3 o'clock. So I'm going to draw an hour hand, and I'm going to make it, you know, kind of close to the 3, but not quite to the 3. And that's my hour hand for, or my analog clock for question C. Now, question D says we're supposed to label this on a number line. So... Here's our 2 p.m. Here's our 3 p.m. 
Then it says plot, plot Zachary's start and finish time. Well, his start time, I don't remember what it was, it was 2.32. So 2.32 is going to be a little bit beyond that 30, all right? And we know that this is 35. So between the 30 and the 35, we need five little intervals, which is curious because it means we're going to use four tick marks. 31, 32, 33, 34, and 35. So we only need to draw four tick marks to indicate five mark, uh, five minutes. So 32 would be two tick marks over. So there is his start time. And I'm going to zoom out. And we're going to label his start time with a B, as in beginning. So let's uh, label that, and let's zoom in and label that with the letter B for beginning. And now his finishing time is 2.55. So we're going to move over, move over, move over, move over. There's 50. And we know that 55, because we're supposed to be counting by fives, is right there. So right here is his finishing time, and I'm going to label that with the letter F. There's his finishing time, and that is, and we're wrapping up this video. So that is grade three, module two, lesson three, where we're using a number line to model time.